Hello and welcome uh, to our um, video uh, discussion about general averages time and um, over the past two years, three years, several, a lot of ships uh, where the ship owners are declared general average, especially the huge container ships like the Ever Given in the Suez Canal that cost millions, that means hundreds of millions of dollars to the PNI Club to settle this and uh, general averages. So the question is always, are these general averages justified if we are looking to the basics which have to be uh, fulfilled so that the general average can be declared? And uh, we want to discuss and an analyze this on hand of a case study, that means of an example. So, um, uh, a 2,500 TU container ship is leaving San Francisco here, Oakland Harbor. The ship is under pilotage and the master pilot exchange was conducted prior departure. All required checks, according to the company SMS, were conducted and the master declared the ship seaworthy. The length of all is 225 meters and the breadth is 32.3 uh, meters. The draft, 11.2 meter, even keel, and the safety depth was calculated with 13.6 meter. All the other uh, calculations and requirements, the company required an under keel clearance safety for this draft of 0 0.84 meters. The plant speed for the passage is 10 knots. The estimated squat at the plant speed is 1.4 meters and the estimated under key clearance at the plant speed is 3.37 meters. So the limited depth, that means the safety contour and the safety depth, the safety contour depth is 13.47 meters. All required entries were part of the NC and the voyage plan was signed by the master and the officers. So there we can see that is actually the planned route from here, the ship will be outbound, then here the turn, another turn, and passing here the Oakland Bay Bridge, and then to the pilot station. The no-go areas are actually defined and are marked, and as well here the cross-track errors are marked. Here we have a rate of a turn, and the wheel over lines are in where the ship have to turn. So also the necessary information when to call um, San Francisco uh, traffic or um, Oakland uh, Bay traffic uh, are included and the emergency anchorage if something is wrong is here. So now what happens? So the ship was actually on her way from Oakland outbound. Oh, this was actually what the ship was outbound here. So, so now the pilot was very late in the turn, so which means that the ship has sufficient inertia not to react. So which means the ship runs aground here. So which means this is the place where the ship were running aground, meaning that is a clear navigational uh, fault, that means a fault by the master and or the pilot, that means according to the hague Visby rule where the cargo is closed, it says article 2, it is actually a navigational fault or a management ship fault mm, and neglect by master and or pilot. But for the general average, this is in the very first moment uninteresting. So now mm, the question what we have to answer is um, the ship had to wait for the next high tide, but even with the high tide, the ship was not moving. In total, six tacks were ordered and tried, tried for two days to get the motor vessel creep, but fell and back into the fairway without success. After two days, the company declared a general average. So the question is, is the general average justified and does it fulfill the three basic requirements to declare general average? Can the cargo owner deny to contribute in general average cost? So let us check these three elements first to see if this is really fulfilled. Actually, the general average, if we have a grounding situation, general average can be declared. So what are the um, general average 
uh, basic elements. So there must be three elements which have to be fulfilled. There must be a danger in which the vessel and the cargo are at risk of loss. The second, the danger must be imminent and the loss is apparently inevitable, except by voluntarily and intentionally sacrificing the ship or some cargo in order to save the remaining. So which means if the master will voluntarily and intentionally sacrifice the ship, that means beaching the ship, grounding the ship to save other cargo, then it is also the third element fulfilled. So let's have a look um, for the situation. Again, the ship grounded here. And we know it was actually a navigational fault. The, the um, Hague Wispy rules are closed. And according to the Hague Wispy rule, the carrier can actually limit his liabilities. But for the general average in the first place, that has no Mm, makes no sense or has no influence on declaring the general average if it was a navigation of fault or neglect by the master or pilot or management of the ship. So let's see first is the danger in which a vessel or cargo are at risk or loss. Um, yes, actually here the ship is aground, what we can see. So which means the ship is aground here uh, there is a danger the ship, because the water depth here is 6.5 to 8 meter and the ship's draft is 11.2 meter even keel. Therefore, the ship is deep into the mud and there is a danger that the ship's shell platings and also the double platen plating will be overstressed and damaged, which might cause envir environmental damages and structural damage to the ship. Therefore, the first one, there must be a danger in which the vessel and the cargo are at risk of loss is actually fulfilled. So what is now with the second part? Is the danger imminent? So if we are looking back to the situation where the ship is grounded, we can say, yes, the danger is just taking place and it is present due to the grounding. The ship might face severe damages in the underwater structure of the ship, the propellant, also the shaft, which will lead to water ingress into the engine room. Further, the ship can be bent in the middle due to high and increased bending moment, which will lead to a crack of the ship and loss of cargo and the total loss of the ship might be involved in this. So therefore we can say the danger must be imminent and the danger is imminent. So the last one is the loss apparently inevitable, except by voluntary and intentionally sacrificing the ship or some cargo in the order to save the remaining. So this is actually, we have to look into this at two, from two different direction. So apparently inevitable. So this might be the case if no countermeasure will be conducted to get the ship back in deeper water, therefore the inevitable loss will be then present. It is, is it voluntary intentionally sacrificing? Here we have to say the grounding of the ship uh, not um, was a navigational fault and it was means it was uh, a fault and neglect a master or pilot. But this is not important for declaring the general average what we said because the York Antwerp rule expressed that here the navigation fault is not acting. But actually you have to say, is there a cover available under the rules of CPNI club for a claim that the member has for contribution to general average, special charges or salvages that would be recoverable by the member from the cargo interest or any other party to the marine adventure, but for the fact that the incident has been caused by an actual fault of the member by a breach of the contract or carriage by the master as a carrier. In many cases, the relevant breach is a breach of the member's duty as carrier under the Hake Hake Wispy rule or Hamburg rule to exercise due diligence to make the ship seaworthy before at the beginning of the voyage or to properly load, stow, care, um, and so on um, the cargo during the voyage. Therefore, if the cause of the incident is one for which the carrier is exempted from liability under the terms and contract of the carriage or applicable law, law, there is no actionable fault which entitles the contribution interest to refuse to make such contribution and consequently cover not available under this rule. So actually here, um, 
the uh, cargo was properly stored, everything was done. We are talking about the Hague Wisby rule where the cargo is closed. That means the carrier or the Hague Wisby rule read, nor the carrier nor the ship shall be responsible and liable for any damage caused by the neglect of the master pilot or mariner or his servants. So, which means he can now exempt liability from the terms if this contract is closed under the Hague Wisby rule. So in this case, the grounding was done by the fault of the master or pilot because engines and steering gear were working and there was no failure. That was also part of the seaworthy declaration. Grounding to the neglect, navigation or management of the ship, which entitled the carrier to defense under the Article uh, 4, Rule 2A in the hague Wisby Rule. But, however, where the contract of carriage is a charter party or some other agreement to which here the Hague and hague Wisby Rule do not apply compulsory, the carrier may be entitled to rely on other defenses. In such cases, a cover is not available under special rules of the PNI clubs unless the member is found liable despite the fact that he has sought to avail himself for all available exemptions and limitations to the maximum extent permitted by the applicable law. So here it's important that the um, charter is um, the hague Wispy rule are closed as a bill of lading. A bill of lading will be used and therefore the hague Wispy rule can be or will be um, included uh, if it is a charter party, not. So which means if we do not have a, a contract of carriage by using a bill of lading, um, then we have a charter party, then the, bill of, the hague Wispy rule will be not included and they are not available for this. And means um, here we have to see then uh, that the uh, carrier may entitle to rely on other defenses than on the defenses by the hague Wispy rule. The voluntary sacrificing in this case that the master and ship owner know that they maybe will lose the ship and eventual also part of the cargo to save remaining cargo, this is sacrificed. Because what is will be done, the ship will be towed, the ship will bear, might be dredger necessary. We will maybe have to lighter the ship to get it out of this mud because we have here around about four, four to five meters the ship is into the mud. So which means there is a high um, risk that the ship during this um, uh, salvage will be damaged. And this is a sacrificing, this is a voluntary and uh, sacrificing so uh, to save the remaining car cargo and uh, to maybe to save, save also the ship and that it will be not uh, damaged uh, and uh, due to this uh, grounding. If the cargo owner would able to prove that the grounding was caused by the unseaworthiness of the ship prior or on commencement of the voyage, then the claim you, or he can claim reimbursement of the contribution from the one who declared the general average. So which means if the cargo owner cannot prove that the ship was unseaworthiness, and that is the actionable fault to have the ship unseaworthy on the commencement of the voyage, then actually um, he will not get a reimbursement of his contribution. So on the general average, it said all cargo owners have to contribute in the general average declaration. And that is a part what the general average adjuster will do. So in this case, we can say, okay, it was a navigational fault or a fault which managed, managed the ship, but at the end of the day, this will be not counted for declaring general average. And in this case, we are fulfilling that the ship is in imminent danger and then uh, that uh, it was um, uh, invitable and apparently invitable. Then uh, that at the if the art start to uh, rescue, that means if we are start to salvage and to dredge to get the ship back into the deeper water here, then at the end of the day, we are also sacrificing because we are might consider that the ship will be completely damaged, but we have to save the cargo. So that is general average and um, the requirements of general average if they are fulfilled. So if the cargo owner will have to contribute in general average, can prove that the ship was unseaworthy on commencement of the voyage, then actually he should not contribute in the, uh, uh, in the general average cost and he will get reimbursed by the 
and one who declared general average. Okay, thank you very much and um, have a nice day.